Hi guys, it's Danelle. Welcome back. What I'm going to show you guys today is our new featured Fusion Mineral Paint Color of the Week. This week we are celebrating Mustard. Mustard is a color from the Michael Penny Collection. It's a really beautiful, um, I would say deep, darkened, mustard yellow color. Um, with Mustard, what I'm going to show you guys today is what it looks like with its first coat of coverage along with which stains I think it pairs beautifully with and complementary colors. Um, we might also go into some accents. Now with mustard, we can also use the color mustard as an accent. For example, maybe you're working on a mid-century modern piece and you don't want the entire thing painted in mustard. It's cool to use mustard, like if you're taping off lines and using mustard as like an accent color within your furniture as well. So today we'll go over some of your options. Okay, so let's first talk about the color mustard. Here is a close-up look on um, a sample block, and this is with two coats of painted coverage. So you can tell that with two coats, it has solid, great coverage, and this was over just a plain sample board. And then the paint itself comes in our pint size, 500 milliliter container, along with our tester size. And because it has great coverage, you can actually get a lot of use out of the testers. So if you just want a pop of color and you wanna maybe paint some frames with mustard, all you will need is a little tester. So what I like to do first is I like to talk about which stains I think it pairs well with. And I like it with darker tones. So for example, like my table, it looks nice with that, but I like it a little bit more with something even darker and richer. So like our ebony, which is like the black stain, it looks really neat with that. And it also looks really nice with the cappuccino. Um, I personally am not a huge fan of it with really light stains. I think it just they just get washed out looking. So my top picks would be the cappuccino and the ebony for staining. Now, if we wanna talk about using like a pairing it with another color, obviously whites are an excellent option because the whites go basically well with everything. So if I were to compare the mustard, and let's say I'm painting a hutch, and I wanna paint the exterior all mustard, and then do maybe the back wall a pop of, you know, like a bright white. I think, for example, both sides look really nice. You just have to decide what you like more. Um, this side has all of our more brighter whites that have less of yellow undertones, versus this side pulls more of the yellow. So with mustard, for me, it's more of a preference. My eye typically tends to like it with a brighter white. So if I were to paint something with mustard, I would probably pair it like with casement to have that pop of you know bright white. I love that pairing. But it doesn't look bad when we start to put it with something with like yellow undertones such as limestone. It still works. So when it comes to what looks nice with the mustard, if we're going a white, I kind of think all of the whites work and it's more a little bit of your preference. So for me personally, I like the casement the best. So besides using like a shade of white, with the mustard, I personally think blues look amazing. I tend to like the deeper, richer, darker tones. So my top pick would be like Liberty Blue. But I also think um, Midnight Blue pairs beautifully. It kind of almost looks like a black when it's put next to the mustard. And I also like Homestead Blue. I feel like all of those look really great together, but you could even go like a lighter blue, such as Heirloom, for a nice pop of color as well. If you wanted to even give it something with even more contrast, um, mustard looks really cool with coal black. I've seen pieces done like the mid-century modern that I was describing where maybe you painted your entire piece in coal black and then you taped some stripes with the mustard or did like, you know, a triangle or a chevron design. That looks neat. Um, along with ash, which is a, you know, deep, I don't want to say dusty color, but it's, it's like a real rich charcoal gray. And even chocolate, which is like our true pure dark brown that also looks really nice. So now what I'm gonna show you guys is the coverage that mustard has on its first coat, and I am painting over just a pine sample board using the mustard paint. And I'll be using um, my go-to brush, which is the Stallmeister, the pointed sash, the size 18. And when I was telling you guys that the mustard has amazing coverage, I think now you can get an idea of what I meant. Um, for a sample board 
or like if you're doing signs or even little crafts that obviously are not furniture that are not high traffic, on a lot of occasions you can probably get away with just doing the one coat. Um, as always for furniture, I recommend doing two thin layers just for that added durability. But for this sample board, I'm gonna just go ahead and do one layer and allow it to dry and then show you guys some options for complementary top coats. So that's what it looks like with just one coat coverage and I'm gonna go ahead and allow that to dry. So our first layer has dried and it's pretty good coverage. I could go ahead and put a second one on for just a little bit more solid opaque coverage, but for sample board purposes, I think you guys get the idea that it has you know, pretty good coverage on the first coat. And then if we compare it here, it would be with the second coat. Um, so what I'm gonna show you guys now are some options for accenting your furniture. Now, obviously you could keep it all just the mustard color, but sometimes to give it some more visual interest, it's cool to highlight some of the details. So the options that I chose today would be the black wax, and I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like paired with the mustard, along with the liming wax. And we're also going to use the antiquing glaze. Now the antiquing glaze kind of gives a similar effect as the espresso furniture wax, but I just wanna show you guys another option. So glazing also could be an option with the mustard color. So I'm going to start with the antiquing glaze. And I'm just gonna put it on um, solid, but if this was a piece of furniture, maybe I would just highlight, you know, like these details. But I kinda wanna just show you guys how the glaze changes um, the color of, or changes the tone, I should say, of the mustard if we were to put it over like full coverage. Now, whenever you're glazing a piece of furniture, the glaze does not have the durability that the paint has. So if this was like a high traffic surface, even though I glaze it, what I would still wanna do is seal the glaze. But if I'm just you know, adding some interest to like the detail work, a lot of times I'll just glaze and not seal it. But if it's like a flat surface, um, I like to seal those versus if it's just the glaze settling in the areas, I'm not too concerned about that. So I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit. And glaze has a longer open time so it dries slowly. And now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and apply the black wax. And I'll try to leave little spaces in between so that you guys can see the difference. So I'm just gonna, let's see if I can do it like this, just to get an idea. And whenever I'm waxing a piece, I like to let the wax sit for a little, you know, if this was a piece of furniture, I'd probably let it sit for about three minutes before I'd wipe it back. So I'm gonna just let that sit a little bit. And then um, one thing with the liming wax, it's not as pigmented and, um, like for example, if I was using Miss Mustard Seed's white wax, that one is, you know, one coat and usually I have a lot of white coverage that I like. With this liming wax, I noticed that um, I have to apply, like what I like to do is apply like two layers of it. And it depends, it depends on the look that you're going for. But this can kind of give a really cool, um, almost beachy effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry. And then depending when I wipe back what I think, I might go ahead and put another layer of the liming wax down. But now I'm gonna go ahead and wipe back my glaze. And I'm just using lint-free cloths. These are the disposable ones you can pick up at any big box store. And right now it's still wet, but when it dries, you guys are gonna see that, you know, it's obviously changed the tone. And I'm gonna wipe back my black wax. And it's hard on this tiny little surface, but I think you guys are at least getting an idea of how it changes. And then my liming wax hasn't been on very long, but we can still kind of see. 
And it, you know, as it sits in the recessed areas, you can allow it to pool so you get more of that impact. And then you don't have to put a second layer if you want, or I should say if you don't want to. And then if I do wanna add more um, of a impact with the wax, I like to let it set for a little bit before I apply the second layer. Otherwise, I feel like if I were to right now, you know, try to add more white to this, sometimes it feels like I'm rubbing it right back off. So I'm gonna go ahead, allow this um, to dry a little bit more, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. Actually, what I think I'm gonna do is while it's drying, I'm just gonna do the whole rest of this section with the liming wax, because I think this is um, creating a really cool effect. So I'm just gonna go a little bit over that previous part. Okay. And this is what it looks like right now with it all still wet. You can see that the glaze has a little bit of a sheen to it that's still drying. And then this was the black wax, and here is the liming wax. Now that our sample gourd has had some time to dry, you're gonna notice that the area that was glazed, it has less of a glossy appearance, because as the glaze dries, that sheen goes down. So where it's still pooling, it has a little bit of a, like a shininess to it, but in general, this gives you a great idea of what the mustard color looks like with our antiquing glaze along with our black wax, and then for just a fun, almost beachy-like feel, along with our liming wax.